Touch is more important than high tech. When a student is in crisis or a student wants to brainstorm an idea, and when they need a question answered, I want to be efficient. And one of the best ways of doing that is using the telephone. And so that's a real high touch way that has been really effective for me. And I had really avoided it for a long time because I thought, no, that's really not the technology of online education. But everything is the technology of online education. Establish social presence using digital storytelling. When you start in a face-to-face -face classroom, when that professor comes in, you're looking at their clothes, the way they act, the jokes, the stories, all these things. You size up who they are, right? So for me, one of the things I leveraged or I relied on was the power of storytelling. And so the power of storytelling, you know, telling stories is a great way to establish your presence and to help students get to know each other as real people. Use technology intentionally. I think we get so excited, I know I do, about new tools and, and new digital communities and social media tools and technologies that we can use to really enhance what we're trying to achieve with students in our courses. Uh, but we sometimes let the tool sort of drive our decision making as opposed to going back to our learning objectives and saying, what do we really want to achieve? Does the tool help us achieve that? Just because we get really excited. The power of external resources. There's tons of resources out there that if you just take the time to look, it's amazing what you can use to supplement your online courses. And so you don't have to do all the work yourself. It doesn't always have to be contained in the LMS or in the textbook. And hopefully through that also help encourage and teach your students that there's great resources out there if you just spend the time. Make your expectations explicit. Being explicit in your directions, in your expectations, um, in everything that you are trying to achieve with students. That so often we keep that secret, we keep that hidden as faculty. Uh, we know what it is. Sometimes we don't even know that we're keeping it hidden. Make it really easy for students to find out what is it they have to do that week, when does it do, how, what are the points, what's at work, those types of things fun and playfulness and the unexpected. Doing something that's different um, can really jolt them and re-energize them and re-engage them in a way that allows them to express themselves creatively. So that it's not just writing an essay, but let's write a screenplay that demonstrates your understanding of these concepts. So anything that adds a little playfulness, I think just re-engages people and makes the online experience not feel so cookie cutter. To log in regularly. You probably should plan at least five days a week to be logging in your course. Now that doesn't mean you have to log in, you know, all day, five days a week, right? Sometimes people, I think, misconstrue that and, and will say things like, well, online learning is just so much more work than face-to-face. -face. I don't necessarily buy that, but it's very distributed. The faculty that I know that are the most successful in my own experience has been, they log in regularly to their courses. The power of personal feedback. One of the things that I find that students really value and that they take away from is when they get specific individual feedback that's meaningful. And by not just giving feedback, but giving audio video feedback, I've had students come back to me and really comment on how it was very meaningful to hear that even the inflection in my voice and, and that they could actually walk away with the positive comments. Whereas a lot of times when you just type stuff out, they just the, the negative just kind of comes through, right?